Jesus, the Bible says, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and I will enter into his court with praise. Can I get some praises in this atmosphere? You are now entering in to a worship experience like never before. You are entering now a worship experience like never before. You are entering in chain breakers. You are entering in your starters. You are entering in things that God has for your life. So come on, let's go before the Lord. If you haven't prayed to God all week long, this is your time and this is your opportunity. But welcome to King of Nation where we believe that God is who he is and we believe of breaking every demonic attack over every part of our lives. So God right now in the name of Jesus be large in this place. God right now in the Jesus, activate this place. God, right now in the name of Jesus, celebrate this place. Ignite this place, God, in the name of Jesus. Stir up your anointing. Stir up your power. Stir up your glory. Stir up your divine revelation. God, we want you to send your Shekinah glory. God, we want you to send your mercy. God, we want you to send your glory. Now, God, shake up Everything that's not like you, we bind everything that's not like you. But God, shake our emotions, God, shake our peace, God, shake our understanding, God, shake our bellies, God, shake our atmosphere. That God, whatever we need in this atmosphere, it shall come to pass. So, God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will touch every person under the sound of my voice. You will touch every person under the sound of my voice. God, I ask you to electrocute them today, God. I ask you, God, that you will start a fire that won't go out, that we can't contain, that we can't control. God, we want to set this atmosphere conducive to what you want it to be. So, God, we call on you right now in the name of Jesus. We call you Alpha. We call you Omega. We call you the beginning. We call you the end. We call you the Rose of Sharon. We call you the Great I Am. We call you El Shaddai. We call you the wheel in the middle of the wheel. But most of all, we call your name Jesus. At the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. At the name Jesus, strongholds have to be broken. At the name of Jesus, you got to rescue us. So we call on your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 stir us up, God. Come on, y'all, let's worship him. I feel a praise in this place. Come on, God, oh. Be large in this place. Be mighty in this place. Be miraculous in this place. Be exalted in this place. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, God. 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 For you're so worthy, so worthy. Those that are watching, can you lift up a sound? Right there, Dave. Those who are in the sanctuary, open up your mouth and bless him. Praise him, you should be on fire before you get up here. Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth. The soul simply says, when I call on his name, I'm going to say it later on. While she's alive, I know she's watching right now. But last week we talked about fire starters. And we talked about that God made a miracle for Pastor Simon. And then this week alone we got another miracle. And I know somebody ought to praise God in advance. Sister Reddit, who they said had cancer. The doctor said one thing. But God said another, another miracle has taken place. You better open up your mouth and believe that's why I gotta praise him. That's why I gotta give him glory. Cause Kingdom Nation, we're fire starters. And whatever we speak on earth, 
it shall come to pass. Whatever we bind on earth, it shall come to pass. So we bind up every spirit of cancer in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of diabetes in the name of Jesus. And we loose God's power, his anointing, his healing over all the land. Come on and give God the best right. about it I'm excited about it those that are watching get ready for a shift in this place your house is not gonna be the same your church is not gonna be the same your family's not gonna be the same your relationships not gonna be the same your money is not gonna be the same but you gotta praise him like you want it you gotta praise him like you need it you gotta pray if you need a healing I double dog dare you wherever you are to open up your mouth and declare God is who he is in the name of Jesus I need somebody to lose their everlasting mind because God I feel good in here, church. I feel good in here, church. I feel good in here, church. I feel not only a shift in kingdom nation, but I feel a shift over the world. And if you've been in a dry place, I promise you today is a new day. Today is a new start. All you got to do is start your fire. Oh, come on, praise team. Start your fire. Start your fire. Start your fire, start your fire, start your fire. When you rub against something that's on fire, it seems as though you catch your fire. Somebody look at somebody and say, girl, start your fire. Come on, praise team. Make your way up here. Start your fire, start your fire. Rub on somebody and say, start your fire, girl. Start your fire, girl. Start your fire, girl. Start your fire. Oh, y'all looking at me crazy. Y'all looking, I feel something in this place, Kendall. Minister Kendall, somebody say, start your fire. Start your fire. Miss Bell, I got a rub on you to stop my fire. Lord, I got a rub on you to stop my fire. Audrey, I got a rub on you to stop my fire. Chloe, I got a rub on you to stop my fire. Naomi, I got to touch you to stop my fire. And when two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing, that he is in the pit. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to lift his name because he's worthy. Trust in and will be made. For it is you, O oh Lord, who has delivered us. It is you, O oh Lord, who has saved our souls. It is you, O oh Lord, who will carry us through. Said, for you are God alone. We won't forget the works of your mighty and miracles you've done time and time again. How 
you covered us with your righteousness. So for you are God alone. It is you, O Lord, who has delivered us. This part is really easy. If you know that God is going to continue to carry you through some things, carry you through this life, I want you to lift this up with us. You brought us this far, and you'll carry us through. You brought us this far, and you'll carry us through. You brought us this far. And you carry us through. You brought us this far. And you carry us through. Oh. You will carry us through. 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 Oh. You will carry us through. There's not a doubt in my mind. You will carry us through. 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 Say, you will carry us through. You carry me. You will carry us through. You'll see me through you it all, God. You will carry us through. Carry us. You will carry Say, us You declare that you will carry us through. You will carry us through. You will carry us through. Say, you will carry us through. Carry us through. You'll see me through it all, God.
Doesn't he prove himself to do exactly what it is that he said he would do? He'll do exactly what it is that he said he would do. His word tells us to do not tarry. His word says, do not tarry. Because he's unchanging. That means he's the same. That means he's the best. He doesn't get better. He's already the best. He's the same today, yesterday, and the day before. He's the same God of Abraham that he is to you. Yes, he is. He's the God of Abraham that he is to the Cyberts. The God of Abraham that he is to the Holloways. The God of Abraham that he is to your name. Hey. Hallelujah. So if you can just be, begin to declare that over your life right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you could ask for, according to the power that worketh in you. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Oh, so don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. So he's able. Yeah. So I know you are. So he's able. Try your man. 
in his word because he's able. He's able. Yeah. Oh, I know you are. Come on, say, God is able. God is able to do. He's able. That's what he said. To do. Somebody needs to get that. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Oh, don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. So don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. So don't give up on God. He'll never leave you. Said he's able. Said he's able. Said he's able. Somebody needs to get that. 
said he's able he's so able said he's so able said so you will carry us through sight Joyful noise, amen, I took the Lord. If you could, come on and lift up a sound in this place. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, amen. I'm truly, truly grateful that God is who he says that he is, amen. For I am an omnipotent God, he said. I am a mighty God, I am a glorious God. Look at somebody said, I'm glad to be in his presence one more time. Look at somebody else and say, I'm glad to be in his presence one more time. Look at somebody else and say, I'm glad to be in his presence one more time. Media ministry, can you move my monitors, please? I'm glad to be in his presence one more time. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. All the things that he is doing for God is truly worthy to be praised. Come on, stand to your feet and give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. For he's truly worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Look at somebody and say, I don't know what spirit you came in here with. Hey, but I came to praise the Lord today. I don't know what you walked in here with, but I came to praise the Lord today. And if you're in the wrong place, you need to walk out and come back in. But I believe that God has carried us through some things. I believe that God has made a way out of no way. I believe that God is still a miracle worker. I believe that God is still a redeemer. I believe that God is still the, who he said that he is. And I don't know about you, but closed mouths don't get fed. And I need somebody to open up your mouth and bless the Lord today. For God is truly worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. My God is truly worthy to be praised. Come on and give God some praise in this atmosphere. Come on and give him praise. If that was for me, it'd be all right. Those that are watching, come on and pray in your house with us. But I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I'm just in all oh, y'all playing in here for me. I'm just excited, Dave. Y'all don't understand. I woke up this morning with God on my mind. And I don't know about y'all, but y'all walk into the church every Sunday so heavy to lay down. But if you just lay your burdens to less at the altar and let God do what he do, God will change your situation around. Listen to me, baby. I got breath today. I don't got a cancer bone in my body. Sister Reddy don't got a cancer bone in her body. And we're still praying for the recovery. Amen. Oh, Sister Tremaine, y'all don't know how blessed you really are. I'm excited, Dave. You can stay right there. I know how to praise God by myself. It says that the rocks won't cry out and praise Him. It says that though you don't praise Him, the rocks will cry out and praise Him. And I don't know, I want you to do a pew check really quickly and ask Him, say, I don't want no rocks crying out for me. I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Why, Pastor? Because we here at the Kingdom Nation, we exist so that those who are lost can be brought back to the kingdom we will never be distracted by the devices of the enemy because we know the power the kingdom represents and we know who holds our future for we are kingdom nation come on and give God praise if you believe our affirmation for our house come on and give it to him come on give it to him Come on, one more time. Give it to him. Come on. Come on, Dave. They a little 
little stiff in here for me. Come on, somebody. You know, sometimes when they say the war cry, it's what they were singing earlier that, oh, 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 oh. Sometimes when you're in the shower, some of us don't know how to hit a tune, but you can say, Cause ain't nobody around you, so let you know. When you need somebody to call on, and it's nobody around, Miss Kim, you will just start making your own harmony. And it don't matter if it sounds good or not, you just start saying, Oh, 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 oh. oh y'all gonna catch it in a minute. You ever been in the shower and try to do the runs like the people on the radio? And you thinking you sounded real good, but. People come in there and be like, girl, what is you singing? Boy, what is you singing? But when we get on all one accord, the sound makes God excited. Oh, y'all gonna catch it in a minute. When we all get on one accord, the sound has God raised up on the throne. And even if you can't hit the right note, God will still hear the praises of his people. And he'll raise up on the throne and he'll bless you. And he'll bless you and he'll bless you and he'll bless you and he'll bless you. And he'll bless you and look at somebody. A blessing from the Lord today. I'm glad to be here, amen. For God is an amazing God and He is truly worthy to be praised, amen. Come on and give it up for Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm so excited about today, amen, because God has truly been a miracle worker. He has been a sustainer and he keeps those that don't even want to be kept. And I'm excited that God keeps keeping me every day and every hour of my life because if it had not been for God who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. So I thank God for being here. I thank God for every person that is watching Kingdom Nation on this morning. Come on, Kingdom Nation, who's in the sanctuary? Bless the Lord for those that are watching. Amen. We thank you. We welcome you. You could be anywhere else this morning, but you decided to be here. And we are so grateful for you being here. Today is a day that I know that God is still who he says that he is. Thank you, sweetheart. That he is still an amazing God. And he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And I want to know about many of you. Are you seeking God or have you seeked God lately? And every time you seek God, he's so much shown to be found, Sister Celeste. I've tried him and I know him at his word. So I want to thank God once again for those that I just believe that I love God that much. I want to thank God for those that are watching. Not only that, Sister Reddick that is watching right now, we thank God for your miracle once again. Amen. I don't know who it's for, but somebody that's watching this live that the doctor has said, one thing about your life, God is the final say-so, and he is the ultimate physician. The amazing part about this story is, is that they took out three lymph nodes, or three uh, masses, and one was the size of a golf ball, the last one. They told her, she had, her, had it on Monday, they told her they, she wouldn't get the results until Thursday. So we were waiting and we were waiting and we were praying and we were praying and while waiting and praying, amen, around on Wednesday, around Wednesday, about two o'clock it was, amen, I got a phone call from my sister, Sister Janiqua and called me. She said, listen, I don't care nothing else you about to tell me right now. She said, I got to tell you that our mama, they told her that she is cancer free. Listen to me. Monday, Father took it out, the Son and the Holy Ghost. On Wednesday, it's supposed to happen Thursday. Y'all better catch it. The doctor saying one thing, your bank account saying one thing, but God can ultimately turn your situation around in the matter of a second if you truly praise Him and worship Him. I was so excited. I started to jump up and down in my spirit and even in where I was at the restaurant, they know that I'm a pastor. I started to shake the phone and started to scream. And they ran to the table. They said, what's wrong, what's wrong? I said, man, we just got a miracle. And Sister Janique was on FaceTime and the whole place that I was in, I was in 
juicy crab at the moment. Amen. And the whole juicy crab came around. Amen. And they started to rejoice with us. Because everywhere I go, I try to leave a stamp of kingdom nation. And every place that I go, they always ask it for prayer. But that time, they start praying for us. And it was amazing to see the restaurant go up in a praise. See, y'all don't know, in church, it's easy to shout. When you're with people around you in church setting, but when you in a restaurant or you in a park or you at a bar that you don't got no business being at sometime or you somewhere and you can lift up a praise in the atmosphere and the people around you will join in and give praise to God, that means that God is still who he said. I used to go to the clubs and I used to talk about Jesus and we used to break out and talk about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Listen, your life speaks for you. If you can only praise God in church, then you ain't being a kingdom person. If you can only praise God in church when people are seeing you, but what if you with the sinners? What if you rolling the blood? What if you taking a drink and you can hold your drink in your hand and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Maybe I'm the only person. I've been in some situations. Minister Norwood that with a drink in my hand. All of a sudden God took over me and I started singing gospel music. See, y'all don't know how to pray. See, that's what kingdom people do. They're not ashamed of where they come from. It's been times that I was laying in the bed and all of a sudden I said we can't do this no more because because God just touched me see sometimes you trying to figure it out but God has already worked it out he'll sit there and he'll take the taste out of your mouth and he'll sit there and tell you no nah, don't do that because I'm saving your life you better praise God in advance for the blessings or the things that he's blocking you from That's why I got to tell my testimony because every day of my life, he saved me from something and I didn't even deserve it. Things that I thought that I wasn't going to be forgiven for, he saved me regardless of what it was, what people said it was. But God took me from the Mari clay and he made me and he molded me. And every time I made a mistake, he said, you know what? I'm just going to fix you up just a little bit more. And I'm, I'm going to put you on the potter's clay and I'm going to keep molding you because that crack, it was meant to crack so that I could fix it. Because if other people fixed it, then you wouldn't be the way I needed you to be. So don't worry about it. Every time something goes wrong in your life just speak to yourself and say I'm being fearfully and wonderfully made I'm being fearfully and wonderfully made I'm the head and I'm not the tail I'm above I'm not beneath I'm the lender and not the borrower I'm excited come on let's get ready for our offering at this moment see that's where you put a seed at that's where you put a seed at. So, so many people think that the money go to the church or to the pastor. No, the seed is for you. When you put a praise on it, when you put your seed on it, that means saying, God, I trust you with this. God, I'm believing that whatever you said to do, I'm being obedient. And God's word does not lie to him. It will not come back to him void. So if he tells you to give a tenth, he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive been a witness for it can I break it down just a little bit while y'all getting your tithes and offering those that are sowing online listen to me don't know if you ever thought about this thing but I want you to think about it hey those that don't even tithe day mighty funny that God's hand is still on the world because Seems like whoever filed taxes, they got a stimulus check. Oh, y'all go catch it here. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And it's nothing that you did good because the government didn't have to give you a dime. But when God, he still loves his people. We're walking up to Easter right now. He died because he knew that we were going to do some foolish things. That's why he can keep blessing you in spite of. So why do we keep shortchanging God? The seeds that we give, expect a harvest. Expect a harvest. I want to thank every giver. We know we do cash out here at Kingdom Nation ATL. 
We know that we do it, amen, on a text at K uh, N Give to 1-888-364-4483. We know we have an app at KN. That's our app, amen. We know that you can go online at www.kingdomnation.org. You can do all of those things. But I want to thank each and every one of you guys for sowing into this ministry. This is good fertile ground. And those that are watching now, wherever you sow, God is getting ready to bless you and bless your household. Those that are giving even right now, amen, to Sister Jennifer, to Siobhan, to Sister Reddick, to Sister Sherelle, to all of those that I see on our report that is giving to this ministry. I speak blessings over your life. I speak blessings to every person under the sound of my voice in this place. That God is going to give you double what you have poured out. That he's going to replenish your bank account. And not just your bank account. It's not always going to come to you through money. But replenish sometimes your health. Replenish sometimes your family. You've got to remember every seed is going to come back. But it might not come back in form of money. But it will take care of the needs that you need to be met. So when you give, let's not give in a grudged heart. But let's give this Sunday to know that my seed is getting ready to manifest. Can I get some praise in this atmosphere for that? Say to your seed, my seed is getting ready to manifest. Dave, can you declare that with me? My seed is getting ready to manifest. Come on and give God praise as you get ready to give us some giving music. As everybody is getting ready to give. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Yeah. 
Thank you for watching, Jada. We miss you so much. Mama Cox, you know we love you so much. Sister Marsha, we waiting on you to come back home, baby. Sister Shamia Garen, we love you, cuz. Sister Perkins, we love you. Amen. Chuck, we love you. Amen. Miss Walker, we love you. Leo, we waiting on you to come back to church, son. I need you to make your way back. This IT department needs you. Tremaine, we love you. We pray for you. Already we giving God praise for you. And also Keith, Miss Apostle Keith, we know that we love you as well. Come on, Kingdom Nation, can you give them some love for those that are watching on live right now? Hey, ladies, it's Come on and give God praise in this atmosphere. Amen. For God is good. Amen. Y'all supposed to be social dis. I'm just joking. <laughs> that's family. That's family. That's family. Amen. Thank you, Deacon and Lake Floyd. I appreciate it. Amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. The side number. Is that our final number, Dr. Washington? Our side number. Come on, give God praise for the things that we have done in this place amen you guys have been fire started uh. <laughs> you guys make me happy every time we meet our goal i'm excited you want to give yourself a hand for that amen amen that means we moving on up to the east side i don't know i'm just in a good mood today y'all and i woke up in a good mood i did i saw that my children and my husband and my mother were doing well saw that I could come here on Sunday morning and all of y'all beautiful faces were here and nothing happened to y'all over the night slumber that the tornado passed over us amen and I didn't get any phone calls that I had to do a funeral so I'm grateful sister Celeste I'm grateful amen to have the best church on this side of heaven that's y'all I'm talking about y'all I'm talking about y'all Amen. Come on and give it up for Pastor Martin as he always supports us. Amen. Him and his lovely wife. Amen. Amen.
amen. Me and the Kingdom Nation went over there about two Sundays ago, amen, for their fight party, amen, and we had an awesome, awesome time sharing, amen, with him and his lovely wife and his church family, and we're excited about the fellowship, amen, amen. Minister Kendall, are you ready to preach for us, sir? Come on and give it up for Minister Kendall, as he does such an awesome job every, every Sunday he gets up here. He might hoop today, y'all. He said he was in a good mood today. <laughs> but before he comes, can y'all give my loving husband some love, everybody? On how much I love him. I appreciate him so very much. Amen, amen. But now, can we give it up for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Come on, Kingdom Nation, make them hear you. Give God the best praise you can give it. Minister Kendall. Where my fire starters at? Make some noise. I said, where my fire starters at? Make some noise. Come on, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. I told Pastor T this morning, I was just in a goofy mood. I don't know. Woke up happy. Woke up. Some people didn't wake up. So I, I'm just the fact that I got up out the bed. Just the fact that my eyes opened. Just, just the fact that I was able to do for myself and I had something to eat. I had a car to get in. I had a church to come to. I'm just happy. I'm just happy. I don't know about you, what you came in with, but I need you to do me a favor real quick. I just need you to shake it off. Whatever whatever you came in with, whatever burden you came in with, don't sit there and look at me with a stink face today. Shake it off. 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 Pastor Steve, you know I appreciate you. Thank you. Amen for the opportunity. My man, Deacon Cyber, God bless you, man. Amen to my mother who's in the house, Minister Becky. Amen, I thank God for you. Amen, Pastor Martin who always support God bless you, man. We appreciate you. Amen, I believe there's a word from God today, so let's just jump right into this thing here. Come on, let's go to Nehemiah 6. Nehemiah 6, verse number 15. It's just one verse. And when I read it, it may not sound significant at the time, but hopefully it'll make sense to you by the time I'm done. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 6. Verse number 15, it says, So the wall of Jerusalem was completed on the 25th day of the month of Elul. It had taken 52 days to finish building the wall. So the wall of Jerusalem was completed on the 25th day of the month of Elul. It had taken 52 days to finish building the wall. Amen. I just want to use as a subject this morning, finish what you started. Amen. Finish what you started. You may be seated if you can. Finish what you started. It was author and motivational speaker Les Brown who was quoted as saying that the graveyard is the richest place on the earth. Not because of the natural or the material possessions that are buried inside the coffins. But because inside those coffins, inside the mind of the dead, are the hopes and the dreams that were never fulfilled. There were books that were never written. There were songs that were never sung. There were inventions that were never shared. There were cures that were never discovered. All because somebody was too afraid to take the first step. All because they were too afraid to tackle a problem. All because they were too undetermined to carry out their dreams. Somebody under the sound of my voice today, whether you're in this room or you're online, you may have a vision, you may have a concept, you may have an idea that you have not yet taken action on. Or you may have started something, but somewhere along the line, you've abandoned your vision and it's waiting for you to finish what you started. Whether it's fear, whether it's lack of support, lack of motivation, lack of financial resources, whether it's intimidation or whether it's any other issue. If God has birthed something inside of you, it is your responsibility to deliver it. If God births something inside of you, it's your responsibility to push it out. God does not impregnate you with greatness just for you to take that greatness and sit it on a shelf and do nothing with it. If God has given you something great, if God has given you a great work, if God has given you a great vision, if God has given you something great to do, it is your responsibility to see it through to the end. 
Can I tell you that there's probably three things that are getting in the way of you working your vision. There's three things that are getting in the way of you reaching your goal. There were three things that are getting in the way of you implementing your plan. Can I tell you what the first thing is? The first thing is your mindset. Amen. Somebody say mindset. It's your mindset. The first thing that can get in your way is your mind. But it got to start with knowing what you want. You got to know what you want and you got to know why you want it. If you're not clear on what your vision is, if you're not truly committed to your vision, then you're never going to achieve it. And my question for you today is, what is it exactly that you are trying to achieve? What's important to you? Why is it important to you? How will this thing change your life for the better? And more importantly, how will it change the lives of those that are connected to you? And what your vision is, it should not only change your life. It should not only change your life. It should not only change the life of the people that are connected to you. It should change the life of people you don't even know. What is your vision? Are you clear on your vision? And if you're not clear on your vision, sometimes you begin to hold yourself back. You begin to sabotage your efforts because you have an underlying fear of not being successful. Fear. All the what ifs. What if it don't work? What if it doesn't work out the way I planned it? What if I don't have the money? What if I don't have the resources? What if they don't support me? You've gotten to this place in your mind where you're now self-sabotaging your own vision and you're, you're self-sabotaging your own goals because of the fear that lives inside of you. I can't do this. I don't have the experience. I don't have the resources. I, I don't have the money. I, I don't have the support. Stop self-sabotaging yourself. Get up and do what God has called you to do. I can't do this anymore. I, you have thrown in a towel on something that's important. And if you don't believe in your own self, can I ask you a question? Why should I? If you don't believe you can do it, why should I believe you can do it? If you ain't even supporting your own dreams and supporting your own vision, why do I believe that I should support your dream and support your vision? You've got to get your mind set together so that you can do what it is God has called you to do. So the first thing is your mindset. The second thing that can either make or break your goal, the second thing that can make or break your vision is your planning. After the mindset comes the plan. Everyone has heard the phrase, if you plan to fail, then you, if you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. If you don't have a plan, how do you navigate your vision? When it comes to your idea, when it, when it comes to your vision, if you don't have a plan, how do you model it? How do you market it? And how do you support it? How will you be successful if you can't figure out who your target audience is? You can't figure out who your clientele is. You can't figure out who you trying to reach. You can't figure out your value proposition. You can't figure out your own financial net worth. You can't figure out what is going to be the key revenue stream that's going to keep your vision afloat. It's in your planning. How do I reach my potential market? And once I reach them, how do I convert them to a repeat customer? How do I get their attention and how do I make a sale? You've got to have a plan in place. What are your specific targets? What are your actions and what do you need to do to meet them? Where is it that you want to go from here? My business is here. My, my vision is here. My ministry is here. How do I take it to the next level? Tell somebody, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a clear plan for your business. You, you've got to have a clear plan for your goal. You, you've got to have a clear plan for your ministry. How am I going to turn this thing into a money maker? Do you even know how much money it's going to cost you to get it off the ground? Have you calculated the costs? Have you figured out what the risk factors are? See, the problem is a lot of us don't have a plan. And because we don't have a plan, everything we put our hands to fails because we haven't properly planned on how to make it work right. The planning phase isn't the fun phase. But it's the critical phase to move you to the next level. So once you've got your mindset right, once you've planned it out, 
The next thing that can either make or break your goal or vision is your implementation. It's your implementation. You've you figured out what your biggest problem was. You figured out what all the symptoms are. You, you figured out a way to work everything out. You, you have come across obstacles if you're in your execution of your vision. And now it's time for you to implement. But again, it starts with a goal. If you don't have a clear goal and you don't have a clear plan, how can you implement anything? You can't figure out how to juggle everything. And now you are trying to juggle it and you had to come with a clear plan on how to implement. Eventually you will drop something that's important to your plan or your goal. Assuming that you have a meaningful goal in place in the first place. It comes down to having the right structure. You got to have the right system. You got to have the right people in place to support the vision that you're putting out. So you've got a lack of skill, you've got a lack of experience, you've got a lack of money, but you've known how to implement that plan. So can I ask you today, what are you going to do with what God has given you? You've gotten your mindset right. You done got your plan right. You done got your implementation process down. And now it's time for you to go to work. And uh, Nehemiah is chapter one. We're introduced to a man by the name of Nehemiah. And you have to understand that he's one of the Jews. And the Jews are in the place in Nehemiah where they've been exiled from their homeland. Because of their disobedience to God. Because they haven't put God first. God allows Jerusalem to be attacked. And when they're attacked, the nation is scattered. Some were taken as slaves to other nations. Some, some get away on their own. But now Jerusalem is scattered all throughout these other regions. And after a period of exile, the Jews then returned back to Jerusalem in order to rebuild the city. While they were attacked, the city was destroyed. And most importantly, the wall was ruined. So Nehemiah, he, he realizes that there are people now who are going back home. And there are people who are back home and they've rebuilt the temple. But the problem is the nation is still in disarray. They're still having issues. They're, they're still having problems. They're, they're not the same city that they were when they left Jerusalem. And Nehemiah understands that I've got a plan. I've got the right mindset. I know how to implement it. And I need to get back home to get my people right. So what does Nehemiah do? He goes to the king. And Nehemiah is now in Persia. And he asked the king, King, my people need me. Can I go back to Jerusalem and help them get their lives back together? So he gets, his, he gets permission from the king to travel home and, and to help rebuild this wall. And can I give you the first point that I want to give you? When it comes to knowing what to do, when it comes to implementing your plan, you've got to be selective about what you embark on. You've got to be selective about what you embark on. The problem with some of us is we try to do everything and we don't accomplish nothing. The difference between, there's a difference between being busy and being productive. There's a difference between movement and progress. And some of us are so busy moving that we're not accomplishing any progress. So you've got your hand in this and, and you've got your hand in this and you're trying to make this work and, and you're trying to make this work and you're tiring yourself out, you're stressing yourself out and you've made no progress because you haven't accomplished nothing. You busy moving, but you ain't making progress. So Nehemiah, he was selective about the project that he wanted to embark on. When he went back to Jerusalem, he didn't have a plan to fix this and to fix that and to do this and to get this in order. Nehemiah said, my assignment is to rebuild the wall. My assignment is to rebuild the wall. And you've got to figure out today, what is your assignment? Is your assignment to do this? Is your assignment to do that? Whatever your assignment is, you've got to come to a conclusion that that's where I'm going to put my focus. That's what I'm going to focus on. And that's what I'm going to work on until I complete it. So what's your assignment? Nehemiah didn't go back with a laundry list of things to do. He said, I'm going home and I'm going to rebuild this wall. He saw a problem and he knew that he had a solution to fix the problem. Can I tell you, the first thing I said was what? You got to get your mind right. Nehemiah had the right mindset. 
See, Nehemiah knew that he had the skill set to solve the problem that was plaguing his people. And here's what I like about Nehemiah. He never doubted himself. He never had the mentality of, I can't do this. He never had the mentality of, what if they don't accept me? He never had the mentality of, what if they don't listen to me? He never had the mentality of, what if I'm not the right person for the job? Nehemiah went home with his mind right. He went home with his mind right. He went home with his thoughts together. And what he did was, he went home and he did number two. He put a plan together. It's your mindset and then you got to come to your plan. So when Nehemiah gets home, what he does is he begins to examine the wall. Uh, He went from gate to gate, uh, inspecting all the damage, making assessments about what needed to be done in order to repair this wall. So what he does is he divides the repair of the wall in the sections. And then he assigns families to work on each section of the wall. So the families were assigned the sections that were closest to their house because his plan was if I give you the assignment of fixing the section that's closest to your house, you would take pride in the repair. Uh, You would do a good job because it's outside your house. You don't want the part of the wall by your house looking like anything. So the plan was to put people in place and to give them a sense of pride that when you fix this wall, it's a part of who I am. He had a plan in place. He went and he made his assessments. He went and he put a plan together. He put people in place to carry out the vision. And then the people then started building the wall. So now that the wall is under construction, let me give you another point. Whenever you have a vision, whenever you have a goal, can I tell you, you need to be ready to expect opposition. You've got to be ready to expect opposition can i tell you that you cannot have opportunity without opposition one of the greatest tests of your leadership is how you handle opposition do you panic under pressure do you get up tight do do you lose your temper do do you blow up do you do you get discouraged do do you throw in the towel when somebody opposes your plan Part of the job description of leadership is dealing with people who oppose you and oppose your vision. Understand this, whenever you're attempting to bring about a change, it plays on the insecurities of those people who are around you. And it plays on the insecurities and the ways of the people who have become accustomed to the way things are. All right, all right. What has this got to do with Nehemiah? What, what you'll realize is, once they started building the wall, here came the opposition. Let me introduce you to Sam Ballot, Tobias, and Gresham. Three local officials who are now in this area, and the only reason they're in power is because the Jews were gone. So the Jews are gone, other colonies and other towns have been established, and now there are local rulers in this area. So when Nehemiah shows up, he's automatically seen as a threat. Can I tell you that when you show up, you're automatically seen as a threat to some people. Some people hate to see you coming. Some people hate to see your vision. Some people don't want to support you simply because you're a threat to what they've already established. Oh my God. So Sam Bias, Tobias, Sam Ballot, Tobias, and Gresham. There's these three local officials and Nehemiah shows up. And not only does he show up, he shows up with the king's permission. So they knew they was in trouble if the king gave them permission to come back home. His arrival is automatically seen as a threat to their secure position in the government. So look, look, you gotta gotta see what they do to to the Jews and how they wanna handle Nehemiah because uh, they begin to ridicule him and they begin to talk about his work and they begin to say things like, what do those Jews think they're doing? And how are you going to bring these dead stones back to life? Meaning, how are you going to rebuild this broken and this ruined wall? Can I tell you that some people are looking at your vision, trying to figure out what you're trying to do with that little thing over there? 
how you gonna make that work what what what, what, what you gonna do with that how, well why would you even attempt this in the first place but can I tell you what Nehemiah uh, chapter 6 verse 6 says it said even amongst the ridicule they kept on building you, you, I think you missed it even amongst the ridicule and even amongst all the issues and even though people were not for what they were doing verse number six in chapter six says they kept on building God God I need somebody to get that in their spirit that even though they talking about you you better keep on building even though they're not supporting you you better keep on building even though they won't even put no money into your business you better keep on building you got to keep on building and and what happens now is they ridiculed them and they they talked about them they they talked about the vision but the people kept working and and what Sam Bias and Tabalit then begin to do is since the ridicules and the insults don't work the next step they took is they threatened them with violence uh, chapter 4 verse number 8 it says that they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to stir up trouble against it here's how Nehemiah responded he posted guards all over the wall to respond to the threats so that if you come at me I've got somebody that's going to be able to defeat you if you try to stop what I got going on you better surround yourself with some hitters. You, you better surround yourself with some people who don't mind fighting. You better surround yourself with some people who will cut you. I'm like Peter. You mess with me, you mess with mine, I'll cut you. You better get some people who don't mind going to war for you and protecting your vision. You need some thugs in your corner. You, you, you need some gangsters in your corner. You, you need somebody who ain't scared to go to jail. You, you need somebody who ain't scared to pull that trigger. I'm trying to tell you something. The violence didn't, the threat of the violence didn't work. The ridicule didn't work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to now bring false accusations against Jerusalem. We, we're going to bring false accusations against Nehemiah. So what does Sam Ballard do? He, he sends a letter. The Bible says that he sends an unsealed letter by a messenger. He didn't even seal it up, which means that anybody who came in contact with the letter could read the contents of the letter to see what it says. So he was trying to put a rumor out on Nehemiah that he was trying to take over and become king. So he puts out a false accusation and he spreads the rumor by not putting the letter in a sealed envelope. So now since my tricks didn't work, now that my threat of violence didn't work, now I'm going to spread rumors and lies about you to get people to think differently about who you are. So now I want people to think about you a certain way. I want people to believe rumors about you that ain't even true. What was the rumor? The rumor was he's trying to be the king. He's going to try to put y'all under his control. Nehemiah responds back, man, y'all lying. Stop playing with me. He, Nehemiah says, none of that is true. Nehemiah sends the messenger back to tell Sam Ballard, ain't none of that true. You just trying to stir up trouble. You just want me to stop what I'm doing to address your foolishness. So the ridicule didn't work. The threat of violence didn't work. The rumors didn't work. And now look at what Sam Ballard and Gresham do. They come down to where Nehemiah is on the wall. And he says, Nehemiah, we was just playing. We, we ain't really mean all that. Come on, man. Let's, let's go down to a place called Ono and we can talk this out. Let's go down to the place of Ono and let's check this out. And let, let's talk about this. But Nehemiah had something that every leader needs. Nehemiah had something that every visionary needs. Nehemiah had discernment. And Nehemiah's discernment kicked in and his discernment said I can't go with them because they're gonna try to hurt me they're gonna try to take me out they're gonna try to stop me they're gonna try to do anything that they can to stop me from building this wall come on down Nehemiah and let's go down to oh no here's what Nehemiah's response was after his discernment kicked in Nehemiah said I can't come down because I'm doing a great work. He said, I can't come 
down because I'm doing a great work. Why should I stop the work that I'm doing to come down and meet you at a level that's beneath me? Why should I stop my assignment to come down to where you are and entertain you? Here's the point for somebody. Stop coming down to entertain people who ain't even on your level. There are so many people who want your attention. There are so many people who want your time. And here you go with your silly self going down to where they are. And when you go down, you stop your progress. And now you ain't doing nothing but moving again. I thought we were progressing. I thought we was going higher. Now you done stop what you was doing just to go down and entertain some Negroes who ain't even on your level. He says, I can't come down. I'm doing a great work. I can't stop my progress. I can't entertain you. And you need to let some people in your life know that if you want my attention in this season, if you want to be close to me in this season, I can't come down. You got to level up. You got to level up. You got to get on my level because I've already been where you are. I've already fixed that part of the wall. Think about it. If he was up on the wall up here, he had already completed his work down there. And God doesn't give you vision for where you've been. He gives you vision for where you're going. He gives you vision for where you're going. So I can't come down. I can't stop progress. I can't stop working. I can't let it go because God has given me something. God has given me an assignment. He's impregnated me with something and I can't stop what I'm doing to entertain people who ain't even worth my time. Why should I stop what I'm doing to entertain you? That's some of our problem right now. You keep making progress. You keep progressing, but you keep coming off the wall. Why you keep coming off the wall? Why do you keep stopping your work? You were doing so good. You had stopped drinking. You done stopped smoking. You done stopped doing whatever you was doing. You done started coming to church, and then you got a phone call and entertained somebody who wasn't on your level, and because you decided to stop, you stopped progress. You stopped your progress. Nehemiah said, no, nah, man, I can't come down. I'm doing too much. He said, I'm doing a great work. He already had self-confidence in what he was doing. He already knew that the vision that God had given him was great. He already knew that what God had birthed in him was great. And I will not come down. I will not stop my work. I will not stop my assignment. I will not let an enemy trick me to come down off my wall to entertain something that I've got no business entertaining. And that's the problem with some of us, man. You keep going backwards. You keep going back. You keep messing up your progress. And every time you go back, you got to start all over again. Every time you go back, you've got to start all over again. And can I tell somebody in here, or even if you're online, something that you started should have been finished by now. Something that you started should have been finished by now. Your business should have been birthed by now. Your book should have been written by now. Somebody has a movie inside of them. Somebody got a, got a stage play inside of them. Somebody's got a master class inside of them. But because you came down off the wall, you have not finished what you started. You've got to complete it. What I said in the beginning, God did not put greatness in you for you to put it up on the shelf and leave it there. Kingdom Nation, there's greatness in this room. There's a couple of y'all that are entrepreneurs in this room. Finish.
finish what you started. Get your mindset right. Put your plan together. Implement your plan. Stop dealing with people who ain't on your level. Tell them you got to come up here if you want to be next to me. You got to level up if you want to be next to me. I can't come down. I've had too much progress in my life for me to come down. So my word for somebody today is that I'm done. Don't come off your wall. Keep building. Keep grinding. Keep hustling. Stay motivated. Get your mind right. Put your plan together. Implement your plan. Start building. Start building. That's the most important part. None of all that other stuff matters if you don't start building. Kingdom Nation, we're building something. We're building something. People have probably looked at this ministry and said, what they in there doing? How they think they're going to succeed? How they think they're going to survive? How they think they're about to be the next big thing? Because we building. Because we planning. Because we got our mind right. Because we know how to implement. Don't you let people's opinion of you stop you from doing what it is God has called you to do. Don't you dare allow another bad word. Don't you let another bad seed. Don't you let uh, another down, another downplaying word to come against your life and make you stop progress. You've gone too far. You've accomplished too much. You're too far along just to be moving. What's the difference between movement and progress? Progress is upward mobility. Movement can be up, it can be down, it can be lateral. But when I'm progressing, that means I'm moving up. That means I'm going higher. That means God has given me a place and he's about to elevate me from one level to the next. I've got to progress. I can't keep moving. I can't tire myself out with movement. And some of you have tired yourself out with movement and you have no progress in your life. You're stressed out. You worried. You can't even go to sleep at night just because you moving. Can I tell somebody to stop moving? Start progressing. Start building. Give God a hand clap of praise. I'm gonna give God praise for a minute to Kendall. And because God is the greatest power. We shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. The doors of the church are open if we can stand. Those that feel as though you need to make a new plan that you've been moving and not progressing. This is your time, this is your place. If you need prayer, if you need to dedicate your life, if you wanna join Kingdom Nation, those that are watching, if you wanna join, you can do so on our website at www.kingdomnation.org. Once again, that's www.kingdomnation.org. We would love to have you into this ministry virtual and then when everything opens up, we can have you back, amen, in the building, amen. And because God, is the greatest power we shall never never be defeated can y'all reach your hands the word minister kendall god in the name of jesus god we speak back amen the strength of the lord within his body god thank you for the word that he has replenished out to your people god now god father god let it not fall on deaf ears god but father god that we will hear every word that god has given unto him on today God now God father God be pleased father God with the works that he has done God let him know God that his labor is not in vain God and anything that his heart sets so desire God we ask you father God that you will manifest it to him in the name of Jesus touch his body touch his mind touch his household God even touch his wife God in the name of Jesus strengthen their household God and everything shall be added unto him God good measures press down
ground shaking together and running over shall men give unto his bosom thank you god for his faithfulness we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise because god is the greatest power we shall never never be defeated i like this part can we say this as we go home okay i don't know peter's no the devil is a liar god is exalted i will never be defeated i'll never be defeated can you say that to yourself the devil is a liar and god is exalted i will never so much for joining us here at kingdom nation we want to see you here the same place the same time next sunday at 9 a.m sharp but then also we want to make sure you're here at 855 for our intercessory prayer it'll be easter sunday so we're going to believe that god is raised from the dead i'm excited about it not only that friday somebody say friday 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 we will have our worship experience you are welcome to be in the building 2244 Panola Road, Latonia, Georgia, room number eight. Or you can watch us virtually on this page, same time at 7.30 p.m. Friday night. I thank God for you watching. We thank God for you being here. Until next time, come on, Kingdom Nation, give God praise for our viewers online.